thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, I will start with my question number one. Uh, question number 11. Zero 011, sorry. Question 1A, part A, would the government secretary provide an overview of the performance metrics of Kenya Airways KQ, particularly the cross and operational profit or loss for the half year ended June 2023, explaining how the profits or loss compared against other key industri industry players, Mr. Speaker, sir. But B, Mr. Speaker, sir, could the Cabinet Secretary provide a comprehensive account of all support, including government bailouts and loans from Export-Import Bank of the United States of America, extended to Kenya Airways over the last 10 years, highlighting the respective amounts received and the purposes for which the support was extended. Number C, Mr. Speaker, sir, which foreign consultancy firms have been engaged by the KQ in the last 10 years to revitalize the airline and could the cabinet secretary indicate the respective amounts paid to each as well as provide an overview of the recommendations made by the firms. Mr. Speaker, sir, finally, D, what was the rationale behind the decision of KQ to ground Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner registered as 5Y KZJ the, another Boeing 737-700 registered as 5YKQH, uh, KQ, KQH and KQG, uh, that is 787-8, and could the Cabinet Secretary also explain why the option of converting this aircraft to cargo planes was not pursued and identify the authority that approved the removal of parts from this aircraft. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Honorable CS, you may proceed to respond. Uh, just uh, by way of introduction, Mr. Speaker, I hope this is the last time I'll answer questions about Kenya Airways because it's our intention to return Kenya Airways to a private company so that the government of Kenya cannot continue subsidizing Kenya Airways and therefore does not have, the public do not have a stake for us to come and answer questions about private companies in Parliament. So our effort in the Manifesto of Kenya Kwanzaa to make sure that we offload all the shares that the government owes, uh, the owns in the Kenya ways so that we return it to a profitable private company that will not require the subsidies that we have had to subsidize and convert it. The, if we convert the, the debt that they owe to the government of Kenya into equity, it increases their shareholding. So hopefully our, our manifesto objectives of, uh, uh, of getting a strategic investor will make it the last time we are discussing Kenya Airways. Mr. Speaker, um, as captured in the table below, and I'm sure the Honorable Senator has, uh, uh, has an answer uh, the, the, the submitted uh, statement uh, in good time. As captured in the table below, the Ministry through Kenya Airways reported an operating profit in the first half of financial year 2023, a milestone that it, it, had, it hadn't reached in the previous six years. The airline has, the airline has made a significant 120% improvement, reporting an operating profit of 998 million compared with the same period in the previous year where there was a reported loss of 5 billion. The table number one zero will explain. The growth has fueled was fueled by the 56% increase in group revenue, reaching an impressive 75 billion. Additionally, our passenger number surged 2.3 million, an impressive 43% growth from 1.6 million. And our earnings before interest, tax and depreciation, and amortization and rent costs witnessed a commendable upswing of seven points. Our gross profit improved by an impressive 131%, resulting in these commendable outcomes. We acknowledge that our legacy debt did bring down the impressive operating results primary to the due, the huge forex losses because of the depreciation of the Kenya shillings against the dollar. These forex losses were primarily due to the re-evaluation of the U.S. dollar denomination loans and liabilities. These finance charges, these finance 
charge, charges in total amount of 22 billion and therefore heavily impacted our overall results. Mr. Speaker, the airline industry is highly competitive and therefore profit margins in the industry are thin. According to the International Airport Transport Association, IATA, the average net profit margin for the global airline industry is typically less than 5%. An overview of airline profitability compared to other industries is captured below. Vulnerability to external factors. Um, uh, airlines are highly vulnerable to external factors that can impact the profitability, including fluctuations in fuel prices, currency devaluations, supply chain challenges, and geopolitical events. Capital intensity. Airlines require significant capital investment in aircraft maintenance and infrastructure. We can limit their profitability. This is this unlike other businesses <clears throat> that do not have the same level of capital intensity. Cynicality, the airline industry is cynical and can be sensitive to economic cycles. During economic downturns, downturns demand for air travel may decline, affecting airline profit, uh, profitability. Regulation, airline may subject are subject to extensive regulation, including safety and security requirements, which can add operational costs. Competition. The airline industry is highly competitive, with many players operating in the market. Competition can lead to price wars and reduce profit margins. Operating, operational challenges. Airlines face operational challenges, including maintenance, scheduling, and workforce management, which can impact cost and profitability. Pricing strategy. Airlines often use dynamic pricing strategy that can affect their profit margins. Prices for air tickets can vary widely based on factors like demand, time of booking, uh, and seat classes. Seat class. In summary, Honorable Speaker, while airlines provide essential transportation services, their profit margins are typically lower compared to many other industries, and their profitability is subject to a range of external factors and competitive pressure. Additionally, IATA indicates that the global airline industry is expected to return to profitability in 2024, but financial performance across regions remain diverse. The industry financial are, are, are improving in all regions from the COVID-related debt depths of 2020, although not all regions are expected to deliver profit this year. Africa remains a difficult market in which they operate, to operate an airline with economic infrastructure and connectivity challenges impacting the industry performance. Nonetheless, despite the challenges, there is still robust demand for air travel in the region, which underpins the continued move towards return to overall industry profitability. Kenya Airways' current performance of financial year 2024 projections are predicted on this forecast and Kenya Airways targets to return to profitability in financial year 2024 as depicted in the table below. Mr. Speaker, the table below shows also the loans uh, acquired by Kenya Airways and I'm sure the Honorable Senator uh, can read uh, from the uh, GOK loans. You can see what we, uh, we've been giving Kenya Airways, including the 10 billion we gave as soon as uh, we, uh, the government came to office. I wish to inform the House that Kenya Airways was not the only recipient of the government assistance, specifically to cope with the negative impact of COVID-19. Various governments in Africa and outside Africa have provided direct support to the airlines. They include Senegal, $128 million, relief package for its tourism and air transport sector. Seychelles waived all landing and parking fees for the period from, from April uh, to December 2020 and Cote d'Ivoire waived in tourism tax for transit passengers. In addition, other governments that provided fiscal support to their tri uh, travel and tourism sectors are shown below. From Egypt to Ghana to Zambia to Cameroon, we've given that list. Um, technically, it is worth noting that KQ has no loan facility from the Export-Import Bank of the United States of America. The U.S. Exim Bank is a guarantor of a facility of 188 $841.6 million, million to procure six uh, 787 aircraft on uh, one 777 300-range aircraft and one Jenks engine. These three, nine, 90%, this is 90% of the total facility of the $924 million provided by Citibank and J.P. Morgan Chase Bank uh, N.A. Mr. Speaker, table below gives a detailed overview of the firms contracted uh, uh, to, to provide services. Mackenzie, uh, Mr. Speaker, 
operational support in Honourable project safari. Sir, just, uh, just pause a bit. What is your intervention, Senator Fernandi? Mr. Mr. Speaker, since I have the answer and I've gone through it, uh, to assist the House to move fast. Okay. Okay. If members want to, yeah. I'm, the, I'm the response has been circulated so, to honourable so, senators. Yes, that is what I wanted to assist the house to move first, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Would it be in order? I ask my two supplementary questions because so that we make progress as a house. Would that be you better? will proceed to ask question number twelve, number thirteen, and thereafter you will. So I ask the four supplementary yes. questions. Okay. So, Mr. Speaker, since you have given guidance, so let me allow me... Let me so just say, Mr. Speaker, for the record, I think it's important for the answer. You just say that in terms of the uh, farms contracted, I just read the farms. I don't need to read what they do. Okay. Uh, Mackenzie was contracted in 2015. If you can paraphrase... Uh, I don't need to paraphrase the rest, Mr. Speaker. I just read the names. Great. Yeah. Proceed, the, three, Honourable the farms contracted are three. Mr. Speaker, for 2015 to 2016 is Mackenzie. For 2016, PJT Partners. And uh, 2020, Seabury. I think that is all I can say, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. No, no, no. no. Mr. Speaker, there is an important answer, if I may, with your permission, uh, that I am sure even the public will be very happy to, to know. That's the last only one paragraph. That is related to the to the to the to the grounded air, airlines. Senator today. Sifuna, what is your intervention? Certainly, it cannot be a point. Mr. Of Speaker, you know the CS insisted on uh, giving us the name of the contractors, but my document says uh, McKinsey. Yes, it says McKinsey, uh, Mr. Speaker, on the document. Uh, he has told us McKinsey. I don't know if they are the same. Honourable CS, can you clarify that? Mr. Mr. Speaker. Uh, let me just refer back to the document. Yes, correct. It's McKinsey. Thank you. It's McKinsey. Because there is another farm called McKinsey. So that's where the... No, 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 not the person. There is a farm called McKinsey. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, let me just... Uh, um... <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker... I just want to read this statement regarding uh, there, there have been public debate about an, 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 a plan that we donated, so it's important to read it for the record. KQ has not grounded any aircraft, uh, 5YKZJ, which is uh, as B Boeing 787 a Dreamliner, uh, took some time undergoing heavy maintenance because of an availability of many essential and critical components parts in the aircraft market. These shortages are well published in the industry. 5YKQG and 5YKQH are or were two Boeing B737-700 aircraft in the KQ fleet under the operating lease arrangement. Upon the end of the lease, the lessors, owners of the aircraft, decommissioned the aircraft. The speaker, it's important for those who may be new to the, uh, the industry, is that when mo some of the uh, planes that are owned or run by airlines are not necessarily owned by the airlines. They are under operating lease. And the speaker, upon the end of the lease, the lessors themselves decommissioned their aircraft, salvaged valuable components from the two aircraft, removed their, what they thought is important, and transferred what was remained of the aircraft to KQ at zero cost. The authority to remove parts was probably vested on the lessors being the owners of the aircraft. The two aircraft, having been decommissioned and stripped by the owners for parts, had therefore only one viable use as mock-ups in training. So 5YKQG was thus transferred to Kenya Airways Training School, Pride Center, and if you visit it, for use in cabin crew emergency training practical aviation security training and in-flight service training as for mock training. As part of its CSR training, KQ donated 5Y KQH on as is wa is basis to Mangu High School for their training. Mangu is the only public school, public high school with a well-developed flying school and club 
and it provides a pool of skills sets that fits into the KQ workforces. All these were procedurally approved by KQ Board of Directors. The estimate value of these two decommissioned aircraft is nothing more than, more than their scrap value. Mr. Speaker, I was uh, uh, in, uh, in the donation. I was invited to participate in the donation as a chief guest. The students were extremely excited. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this was nothing except for scrap value. And if you go to Kitengela, you will find somebody running a restaurant there called 034, with a plan being the restaurant. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't mean that that's a plan which would have been flying cargo. So I think it's also important to make this abundantly clear to the public because a statement was issued by a, a, a member of parliament in the past to say that we were donating a plan that would have brought billions of dollars. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Fernandes, proceed to ask question number 12. Mr. Speaker, I proceed with my supplementary? No. Okay. Question uh, number 12. Number t question number 12. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, question number 012. Question 1. When will the ongoing project for the expansion of Karengaya Strip in Kericho County be completed? Number 2, Mr. Speaker. What is the total budgetary allocation for the project? And could the cabinet secretary provide a detailed breakdown of the expenditures incurred so far? And number C, could the cabinet secretary provide a detailed assessment of the quality of the works for the project, stating what the government is doing to hold accountable the contractor and any other individuals responsible for any for any identified lapses. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Honorable CS, you may proceed to respond. Question number 12. Mr. Speaker, this is a more straightforward uh, answer, so I'll just read the answers. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, the request to undertake the refurbishment of Karenga airstrip emanated from the National Celebrations uh, Technical Committee during their visit to Kericho on 15th of June 2023 to assess the status of the facility in the county in readiness for the Mashuja Day following the presidential directive to hold the celebrations in Kericho. Refurbishment of the airstrip involved upgrading the runway to Maram standards and construction of an open steel frame shade, shade to facilitate movement of guests during the celebrations. The works were successfully completed on 18th of October 2023, uh, two days before the, I mean, uh, 18 of October 2023. Um, Mr. Speaker, the project total cost to date is 55.4 million shillings, for which 45.4 million is for the clearing, stripping, and grading for the runway, as well as related drainage works, including the construction of an aircraft holding 100 meters by 50 meters apron, and Kenya shillings 10 million for the building of an open steel frame shed. Honorable Speaker, no lapses were experienced during, this execution of this, during the execution of this project. The work was completed in compliance with the Bill of Quantities, Specifications and the Drawings. The project manager's successive approval were done up until the completion of the works. The Ministry is negotiating with the landowners to sell land to Kenya Airports Authority for development of the airstrip. Though the Ministry has challenges with the land ownership of the moment, the project will be completed once the land is acquired. The Minister has also had full consultation with the leaders of Kericho on this very important matter. Mr. Speaker, just, just for emphasis, um, uh, this Karenga airstrip land is owned by Ekatera, the owners of the T estate. And so even when we developed it, it was in the understanding that we will have to engage them to complete the works. We worked with the Kenya Defence Forces, who are the contracted, they were actually the contractors. To, to construct the runway uh, to Maram standard, and as you saw, it was, it was useful for the celebrations. Going forward, we intend to acquire at least 50 to, if possible, 100 acres of that land so that we do a proper airport uh, that will enable uh, agricultural farmers there and people traveling to Kericho and its environs to be able to land in that place and take off from that uh, uh, Kericho. I want to thank the leaders of Kericho, led by the majority leader here, for their support, understanding, and also for the work we are doing together quietly, um, Mr. Speaker, to acquire the land. The problem with such uh, infrastructure, when you come to parliament or public, 
and announced that we are looking for land. Uh, usually the prices uh, shoot up, it, it's inflated. The good news is that we are discussing this with already an established investor. So uh, uh, we have made it clear to the investor that uh, land acquisition uh, will, will be on fairly concessional terms, considering that they are also leaseholders lease from the government of Kericho County. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Fernandi, proceed to ask question number 13. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, question number 013, uh, uh, question 1, could the Cabinet Secretary provide a status update on all projects from the construction and upgrade of roads undertaken by national government in Nandi County since 2013, explaining any discrepancies between the contractual and actual dates of completion? But, P, Mr. Speaker, what are the reasons for the delay in resuming construction of Kaiboy, Chepterwai, Kapkatembu, Chomisha, Chemuswa, Chomisia, Danger Road, Timboroa, Maraba, Kopere Road, Mugundoi, Nandi Hills Road, Nandi Hills, Simaki Road, Lesos, Kesis, Cheptiret and Cheptiret to loan more university roads in Nandi County, which have stalled. And could the cabinet secretary also outline steps taken by the government to expedite the resumption and completion of these uh, projects, Mr. Speaker, sir? I thank you. Honorable Sears, you may proceed to respond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the speaker, this, uh, the, I, I'm glad that I'm responding to this question, having given a global picture of the roads in the country. So already I had uh, shared with you the, the, the situation in the country, thanks to the question of the, from the Deputy Speaker. So I'll just go straight to the answer. I wish to state that 183 kilometers of roads have been upgraded to, to bitumen standard uh, uh, with two uh, major bridges constructed to completion in Nandi County since 2013, undertaken by Kenya Rural Roads Authority. Details of the projects are detailed in the annex. Concerning discrepancy between the contractual and actual dates of completion, I wish to state that the Ministry has faced financial challenges in the funding, as I earlier indicated, due to inadequate allocation and disbursement from the National Treasury over the years. This has culminated in the accumulation of significant pending bills from certified works Contractors have consequently been reluctant to complete the works in the affected project, citing non payment of their dues. The government, through the National Treasury, is working on the mechanism to facilitate significant reduction of our clearing of pending bills in the, in the near future. This will result in the full resumption of completion of affected uh, projects countrywide. Roads under the jurisdiction of Kenna in Andy County have been managed through performance-based maintenance contracts and routine maintenance contracts, depending on the planned intervention and available resources. The agency is currently managing 10 ongoing maintenance contracts in the county. Nine of the maintenance projects are administered by the Western Region Office, situated in Kagamega. One project is administered in the North Rift Regional Office, uh, that's the routine maintenance and support improvement of JN A8 Eldoret Kapsabed Road, which is commenced on 8th March 2024 and is scheduled to end on 4th September 2024 with a contract sum of 38 million 218,314. The road is 40 kilometers long but only 22 of it is in Nandi County, i.e. from the Mlango to Chia Barbara. Lastly, the roads done under the jurisdiction of the Kenya Urban Roads are indicated in the table below. Uh, that is, uh, uh, we are upgrading to bitumen standards. The, Kamobo Baraton University Road, performance-based routine maintenance of Kapsabet Municipality Nandi, uh, which are one, two, three, four in Kapsabet, uh, and then routine maintenance of package five roads in Kapsabet again, five and six, and then upgrading the speaker of Mosoriot Township, uh, uh, 5.3 uh, kilometers. What are the reasons for delay in the resumption? of the other roads, Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, 
Mr. Speaker, for the Kaiboy Chapter Y, Kapkatembu, Timbaroa, Maraba, Kopere Road, uh, this road, Mr. Speaker, when I came to office, is part of the eight roads that we discussed with the agency and terminated their contract for non performance because they had been awarded uh, earlier in 2016 and nothing had happened uh, for, the, for, for the entire period. Uh, those roads are in Nandi, Meru, Baringo, Elgio Maraquet, Kisi, Homa Bay, and Makweni. They are eight roads, and I have the tabulation I can share to the, to the House. Mr. Speaker, the project commenced. Uh, the one for uh, Kaiboy, Chapter Y, Kapkatembu, Timbaroa, all these roads, the project commenced in February 2017 and was to be completed in February 2021. The contract has since been mutually terminated due to contractual challenges. To enable timely delivery, the works were split into two lots, uh, repackaged and retendered. The contracts were awarded on 14th March 2024 and are expected to be signed within the next 28 days as per the law uh, upon submission of the requisite securities by the, contract, by the contractors. The contractors will be then mobilized and commence works with immediate effect. On the Chemuswa Danger, Mo University, uh, the, the Chemuswa Danger, the Nandil, Simaki, Lesos, uh, Cheptiret, uh, uh, and the Cheptiret Mo University roads, these are parts of the ongoing roads, um, Mr. Speaker, uh, which has faced challenges of completion. The project was originally scheduled for completion in August 2020, 2020, long time ago, but this has since been revised to August 2025 due to inadequate budgetary allocation that have led to the contractor being unable to complete the projects due to, due to cash flow challenges. Um, the speaker, just for the comfort of the other senators who may not have asked a similar question, this is what I told you earlier, that in the entire country, 60, uh, about 60 billion shillings is spending in Kera Roads from Mombasa to Malaba, from Lokichokyo to Loitoktok. All of them uh, suffer this kind of consequences, Mr. Speaker. That's why I told you I, I had to read the global statement uh, so that even those who will ask follow-up questions appreciate that the circumstance under which we are operating is uh, a very poor budgetary allocation. Mr. Speaker, the last part is uh, the Mugundoi Nandi Hills Road was proposed for upgrading to bitumen standards through, though we have been maintaining the road in to achieve more durability, utilizing 22% of the fuel levy funds. I acknowledge the completion of the Timbaroa, Mateite, Seko, Kopere Road have faced significant delays due to contractual challenges caused by inadequate budget allocation. The contractor achieved 47 kilometers of tarmac but was unable to complete the total contract at 94 kilometers of roads despite numerous interventions. Consequently, the ministry in consultation with the Office of the Attorney General mutually terminated the contract on 28th of August 2023. This paved way for the retendering of the remainder of the works advertised on 27 October 2023. To enable timely delivery, the works were split into two slots repackaged and retendered. The contract was awarded on 14th March 2024 and are expected to be signed in 28 days, as I said earlier. Contractor will be required to mobilize and commence immediately. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.